Go ahead, Helen. So, you know, it's interesting when you look at the challenge from an enterprise, right? They're bring your own device to work. Um, there's the technology piece and then security implications, but most of the large enterprises are actually dealing with the legal implications of what it means to bring your own device, especially for contractors or temporary staff in terms of, okay, if they bring their own device and now their device is at home, do they, uh, is it, are they still working for the company if they respond to email? Whereas if it was a device issued by the company, it's a different problem. So you, know, it's, you, you look at the technologies, you look at the security, but when you look at an enterprise and all the things that they have to deal with, security is sort of maybe the last element that they have to check off before they even get to it, right? Like they have to address all these other issues. So, and by the time they get to that, we better have solved the problem because now that's the only thing that's stopping them from allowing the bring your own device to work. And, and even if they check it off, what I see happening mm -hmm. is that the measures that some enterprises have, because they have these well-worn trails, are so draconian for endpoint users that they'll just bypass the security anyway. So just start using it wherever they can get it. But I can't get that document off of my mail server because of this antivirus phishing attempt mail gateway they have in place. I'll just have them mail it to somewhere else and I'll put it on my home machine. They'll bypass security just to get their job done. And that's a big problem. Uh, I think ultimately if you chop the problem up, you really have a problem of secure connectivity, how you secure the platforms, and how you secure the apps. And the problem with that is ordinarily you will have those approaches uh, segmented, both by solution type, by who operates them, how they're scored, uh, how they're managed, uh, how they interface with compliance engines. And so without kind of an end-to-end -end solution to how you look at workflow, I mean, applications and information is not particularly useful if people don't have access to it and they don't consume it. So I think the notion of spreading out across those three areas gives you a way of focusing on how you deal with, uh, again, the, the connectivity to the platforms that secure app and serve up information. Um, and so if you talk to, so in all full disclosure, I'm an advisor to Bromium. So short of that cute accent that, uh, that, that Simon Crosby has, I, I think from the perspective of what it means to manage. So you can't say it doesn't work. No, because it does. <laughs> I, I happen to have a laptop running with it, and I give it to my kids, so that's an ultimate test. So I think ultimately the approach of, if, if fundamentally we don't trust the operating system, we, we have to have ways of allowing a user to trust the experience that they're having without doing that kind of pop-up of, are you sure, are you sure, are you really, really sure, right? So, th and that's just on the consumption end, but we need that capability of tying in telemetry and intelligence across the things we use to connect to our platforms, the platforms then have to expose and allow people to standardize in the way in which they in, uh, can alert both the endpoints as well as the network components that need to then alert, for example, the applications that they need to, uh, that they are potentially under attack. Because today we have complete abstraction. Like the network could be under attack, the apps will never know about it, and vice versa. You got no consistent way of, of defending yeah. those three uh, approaches. Well, what's scary, right? But you know, we're living in the first generation of cyber warfare uh, mm -hmm. in our lifetime where a lot of stuff's going on just around the, among the countries. So the question is, is that on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, you know, no problem, zero is a total fail um, with security. Where are we as an industry? I mean, how bad is it? I mean, really, how bad are we with security right now? In terms Wait, of com compared to what in terms of a timeline <laughs> and when? <laughs> I mean, because this, this is the problem, right? It's like you can either say it's the same as it ever was, yeah. or you have just an escalation given the availability of technology and social media. Given where we all want to go. So like, Brom I don't, what I like about Bromium's is idea is that it's a disruptive concept that takes into account the preferred user experience, yep. well, right? Bromium's so that is mobile. Invisible. Yep. It's I relatively mean, invisible, and security needs to be invisible until it's needed. And the thing is, is if you, don't, if you have something like that on your endpoint device, it will protect you. But if you don't have it, it won't protect you, so you need to actually make sure it's on all your endpoints as yeah, well. I mean, we don't have consistency. That's we don't have thing. consistency at I all. I mean, it's bad. Same as it ever was means it was bad, but how bad is it? And, and with the preferred user experience, and not just user experience, the enterprises themselves are migrating to cloud, mobile, social, all the trends that we're talking about. So, okay. so this whole new experience message that VMware is putting out, it's legit marketing. I mean, there are new experiences, right? Yep. And there are new yep. apps, right? Yep. There are new threats, so. so. It's, a, it's a squeezing the balloon problem, right? Yes. I mean, you could say, if, if, you just, if you say the security is pretty much in stasis, depending upon the influx and, uh, of new disruption, new technology, we go from app-focused app to network-focused to information-focused security, 
it literally is the same as it ever was with you know, the problem being my focus is now on, on protecting applications and information, and when those attack vectors shift because the industry swings there, people pay attention to it, then you go pay attention to things that other people aren't paying attention to, and the, you let go of the balloon and it squeezes out the other end. I mean, we have new vectors, new attack methodologies, we're inundated, but we also have opportunity, because it's easy to talk about negativity, but whether you like the term big data or not, there are people doing amazing things with the, with the lakes and mountains of data that we have of exported security telemetry to make decisions faster, better, and focused on the things that matter most. So, you know, cloud virtualization, automation, all this stuff has a dark side, but it also has a fantastic set of upside if people in the industry can harness the capabilities that are offered so, by it. Okay, so, and we're able to harness that big data mm -hmm. and all the analysis it does to actually provide somewhat of an early warning system. Because yep. if we can get warned earlier about a breach, if I can get warned within one minute, better, long, better than like four months of, a, of an oh, attack. Even after it's happened. Big even though it's after it's happened, I can at least stop it fast enough. Right, but you're still all talking about detection, so we are improving on our ability to detect, but I think uh, virtualization allows you to, for the time to recover, we've also got better tools now than, you know, the past, and how you would recover if you had a breach and just had physical systems, right? So I, mean, I think there are benefits, but what I find amazing, even though we've had security around for so long, and then it's a sort of an industry of its own, that we continue to release technology that still needs to have security bolted on. I mean, that's the fundamental thing, right? Like, we don't take what we do seriously enough to say security should be fundamental, it should be core, it should just be there. And we shouldn't need third-party products to secure our That's always hard, too, yeah. We were too, yeah. talking yeah. about that just before we came yeah. up here, and that is, is that there needs to be, as part of our development cycle for software, even today, better security controls of the software and better testing of it so that we can, when it goes out, it's sitting better than it was before. But look at the new arguments, so the, the new old arguments, which is, oh, we should make software uh, manufacturers liable for breaches, right? That's an old argument. But then you also have whole new markets opening up for cyber insurance for ways of saying, well, if you are breached because of this particular software, we, you know, you can mitigate that cost by buying insurance. All of this rolls around the fact that, for example, detection is hard, prevention is even harder, so in many cases, uh, you know, the approach to how we do things, leveraging technology we had 15, 20 years ago, uh, might open the opportunity for things like deception, which is, you know you're going to get owned, you can't prevent it, you like to detect it, but you like to detect it before you're breached, and then do things that break automation and make the cost of the attack more expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's where things like intrusion deception as opposed to intrusion prevention or detection come into play. So that you're able to leverage a lot of new technology and virtualization uh, at many layers, as well as uh, technology and capability uh, that we're, we're seeing out of big data to use security intelligence and analytics to make better decisions faster. So that's why I said it's the same size bubble, yeah. right? Sometimes you, you blow it up and it gets bigger, but then you shrink it, you squeeze one side, it pops mm -hmm. out the other. I mean, we, we, we fundamentally haven't made huge yeah. um, leaps forward, but uh, you know, we have the opportunity to. All right, so that's a, good, that's a good thread. So obviously big data analytics is obvious. Use preventive, you predictive analytics to help do things. Mm -hmm. um, some of the deception things you're doing is with virtualization, you can do all kinds of cool things, recovery, detect. I want to ask you guys to think outside the box and, 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 and lend your perspective to what's possible that's not yet on the radar that could be a disruptor. Because right? we just talked to Todd Nielsen about Microsoft's missed decade, they missed search, Microsoft stood for, missed uh, all of the key markets, search, um, tablet, and phone, and so, so they just missed those. New, new entrants came in. So what new thing could come out that could just change all this for the better? Any creative visions um, that is completely outside the box? So, I mean, if you look at just security again, right, uh, there is a lot of work in separating personal data from the app, right, so that you can make the apps stateless, so that you can, if there's compromises there, you can upgrade them, patch them, do everything you want, and your data is always separate. That concept, if it's applied to all the apps across you know, all the layers in, in the data center, right, all the technologies, the ability to recover and secure those systems is just much better. Everything's kind of stateless, right, because all your data is separated out and it's in a central place. And then you kind of, again, it goes back to the data-centric security model, which is you secure the data, you really don't care about everything else because it can't compromise the data. So data security, anything? Well, data security where the policies and sort of the security controls are flexible. So we still live in a world where the security controls 
are from the day when everything was static and physical. And we haven't reached the mindset where we are saying that even the security can be flexible, agile, just in time defined. Um, that requires a whole new model because we have to trust that and we have to make sure that that's implemented correctly, otherwise your security control cannot be re relied on. So it's, it's awesome. a lot of no, that's awesome. stuff we got to get done. I, I think you can simplify it by basically saying that, look, security needs to become programmatic. It needs to be enforced in platforms, both infrastructure and at the code layer. You can eliminate you know, stupid human coding tricks by not letting people make mistakes by enforcing it at the platform layer. Uh, that, that includes you know, SDLC functionality, that includes the ability to make sure that we don't have the same OWASP top 10 for the next 600 years. We still have buffer overflows and SQL injection. How stupid is that? It's ridiculous, right? And so you can secure, you can have the most best, awesome virtual anything from a security perspective, and if developers continue to put crap in code, you can get crap out of it, right? So well, what we ultimately need, I think, is if security becomes programmatic and you can make calls and instantiate policy via API, and you can essentially make it part of the application uh, experience from the perspective of how a developer interacts with security, it's a win. And we've gotten to the point now that we know how to write APIs, we know how to essentially use telemetry and signaling, we know how applications can better and effectively more securely communicate with components inside and outside their own ecosystems. The next decade is gonna be spent applying the stuff we've had in the last 20 years that wasn't ready for prime time, that the industry wasn't ready for, the compute cycles weren't there, the cost of compute was not there, and leveraging all this awesome stuff to essentially make security um, more meaningful, more impactful, and more easy to use. Ed, what's your take on that? Well, I think actually what's happening is, is that while I can secure the environment, and all these practices will come into play at some point in time, when the attack happens, I have to be able to do good forensics on it regardless. And the amount of data I get is huge. So forensics is moving out into petabyte scale, and that's very hard to do in any time frame. It's a big data problem, right? It's a huge big data problem, and that is being solved now. There's people doing research on it now, how to solve big data problems for forensics. Hmm. Well, there's vendors actually who have, for example, are leveraging uh, Hadoop backends to do analytics from output from any number of platforms. Security, their physical security, their ACH wire transfers and financial service institutions, all sorts of stuff to be able to consolidate. I, th I, think, I, think, th I think it's a perfect storm. Things are coming together relative yep. to the infrastructure where it's just a mindset shift, one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like get on with the new environment, the modern era, as we've been saying on, uh, here on theCUBE all week, and do something good. Um, so we have one final question left. So what I'm going to do is ask each of you guys to comment on the following. The genie in the bottle, you rub the bottle, genie comes out, you're granted three wishes <laughs> to fix the security, not problem, wow. to change it to the modern era. Mm -hmm. So you rub the bottle, genie comes out and says, you have three wishes. What are your three wishes? Oh. <laughs> That's a hard one. It could be That's anything. Yeah. Get rid of that company, uh, move that. You know. oh, right. uh, uh, well, I think. Better, I think to get it to this perfect, to the ideal state for innovation and some disruption. Yeah. I think yeah. standardization APIs and approach. <laughs> yes. Telemetry and, inter and interoperability at that same level using those APIs such that you can have an ecosystem that truly does add value at specific layers where you, where you do best. Uh, and ultimately, then a way of. Um, being able to give me visibility and uh, different panes of glass for areas of security that are important to me fractured over the different disciplines that we have. It's a very tactical wish list, frankly, because it's stuff we've worked on for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'd agree with the API. So I think the openness from all the applications to be allow other products to plug in or even just fetch data or insert controls is important. On the analytics and the detection, I think there's a lot of technology, but what I don't see is a mindset of sharing. So I would, it would be great if there was a social media kind of technologies available to even share the breach information between companies. Right? It's just automated. You don't even have to have sort of manual processes to share that data. Because I think as, even if you look at just energy, as you have fluctuation in energy, it'd be great to know that there is fluctuation so that if you're going to evacuate all your VMs elsewhere, that gonna, that's going to cause sort of a uh, probably a potential target for that data center to become the attack point. Right, so there's, there's going to be new threats that come out as we start using some of these new technologies. So that would be the second, is open sharing of the data as well. And then third, I would say, is just maturity about how we're adopting all this technology and trying to include security along the way so that it's not left behind. 
Actually, that's my first one, is <laughs> including everybody in the, the process of making these choices in the data center plans that we have of the future, have to include security at the beginning. It's no, it should no longer be a bolt-on. It has to be there from the very beginning. Even at the code or during the initial design phases and feature solution changes. The other one that I have is I actually want security to be invisible. I shouldn't know it's there. It should not get in my way of doing my job. Just prevent me from doing the wrong thing, but don't be draconian about it. Be nice about it. Nice wishes. Exactly, it's a nice wish. Gosh, those um, are all nice. Kumbaya, actually, <laughs> security space. I was waiting here, get rid of XYZ company. Um, but that's a separate panel. Okay, that is the security panel. Obviously a lot going on, a modern era, a shift, and it's going to take a lot of critical mass to um, get things that have been worked on for 20 years, mm -hmm. kind of level set in the new environment. So guys, thanks. Um, Chris, Ed, Hema, thanks for coming on uh, theCUBE. Appreciate you. this, great expert advice. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you very much.